Hello, hello. This is Gemini, your friendly neighborhood spy. I'm here today to share a couple tips and tricks on saving orbs. As you can see, I am about to reach 5,000 orbs after years of saving. So I thought I'd give you some pointers and ideas if you're looking to save orbs on how you can also be an expert orb hoarder. Now, maybe some of these will be useful and some won't, but if even a couple of them end up helping you out, then I think I will have done my what I set out to do. So let's get right into it. Okay, so my first tip for saving orbs is uh, it's really easy to get really, like, excited and worked up about a banner that just came out and that you're really excited for, especially if a character that you really like or a unit who you think is going to be really helpful is on it, and you kind of just want to go all in and spend all of your orbs at once. But one of the most important things for being an orb saver is to never go all in unless you are really and truly spending on something that there is nothing else you would want more. Unless the thing that you are summoning for is like the number one thing that you want and there's nothing else you could possibly want more, then you should never go all in on a banner. Always think about the next banner that's going to come out. For example, the first like the first time I really started saving in the game was in year 2 when Ephraim won or was one of the winners for CYL because I'm a big Ephraim fan so I wanted to save up and get a bunch of copies of his Brave Vaults. And so before that I really hadn't been an orb saver at all. I just kind of spent on pretty much anything that looked even remotely fun. I started saving up after he won, and by the time his banner came out, I had about 800 orbs. And then, while I was summoning for him, we got like the ro we got the roadmap for the next the next set of things that would be coming out in Fire Emblem Heroes. And I remember seeing that the Grand Hero battle that was announced at the time was for Jamka. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Jamki. I don't know. Uh, the Archer from Genealogy of the Holy War. Back then, they would actually announce with the new Grand Hero Battle was before we actually got the banner. So I figured we'd be getting a genealogy of the Holy War banner, and that made me think that Lewin might be on it. And Lewin's another character that I'm a really big fan of, so I I had gotten a couple copies of Brave Ephraim, so I stopped summoning and still had a couple hundred orbs. And I waited to see if Lewin would be on the genealogy banner. And he was! So I was really glad that I hadn't spent everything going for Brave Ephraim because then I had I had about 300 orbs and I was able to get some copies of Lewin too. Uh, and I would have been really disappointed if I had spent everything and then not had any orbs for Lewin. Now I had a, a good indication at that point that Lewin might be on the upcoming banner, but normally anymore they don't really give you that much information. So I think it's it's better just in general. Like unless, like I said, unless the thing that's on the banner is the thing you want most in the game then don't go all in. Always leave yourself with a little bit of a of a fallback collection of orbs, just in case that next banner ends up being something else that you really, really want and you don't wanna you don't wanna miss out on. So a lot of times when something that I really want comes out, I'll spend until I get like one copy. If I get lucky and get a copy early, maybe I'll keep going. But I'm not gonna go all in. Like, I'm not going to try to plus 10 a new character that came out. Even if it's like an alt for one of my favorite characters, I'm still not going to pl try to plus 10 them right off the bat unless it's like a demote, because I have plenty of orbs to spend for a demote plus 10. But I'll set a limit on how much I'm going to spend so that I still have a lot of orbs left over. Because even though ultimately I'm saving for Matthew Walt, the thing that I want the most, there, there are a number of characters who I always want to see added to the game or who... I would love to see you get alts, and if I spend like 2,000 orbs on an Anigo ult that came out, and then right after that, an Ephraim ult came out, which is what happened two years ago with Spring into the Child Banner, then I need to, I don't want to end up having to spend another like 1,000 orbs or something going for the Child Ephraim ult. Having that mindset of always thinking about what the next banner is, of always thinking even if it's unlikely that there's a chance that the next banner might be something you want even more, having that mindset is really helpful for saving orbs. Kind of a tie-in with that is 
something that I did when I first started saving orbs. I don't really do this anymore because I don't necessarily need to because I have a lot of them. But this really helped me when I was starting out was I would set thresholds for myself. Meaning every time I reached a certain like level of orb saving, I could still summon but I wouldn't go below that threshold. In that first year when I was first saving up, I still spent orbs but I had... I set a new threshold every 50 orbs. So like what I mean by that for example is when I reached when I reached 250 orbs and if I got up to like 270 orbs then I could spend those 20 orbs but I couldn't go, go below 250. And then once I hit 300 I couldn't go, go below 300. Once I hit 350 I couldn't go below 350. So I always had a little bit of spending room but not a lot and that was really helpful because I was trying to save a lot of orbs pretty quickly because I had like a six month limit. That's not as necessary if you're kind of just saving in general and going on a more extended saving plan. I sound like I'm talking about like the bills here or something, like you're paying the bills or planning for your retirement. <laughs> but seriously, um, if you're if you're going for a more, more of a long term orb saving plan, that might not be as helpful a strategy. But it might still be really helpful starting out if you are new to saving and kind of just need to start building up a hoard. That's a good way to do it. So another tip that I have, and this is one of the things that was most helpful to me when I first started saving orbs, which I first started saving in the second year of the game, like I said. For the first the first year of the game, I was really bad about this, which is anytime you kind of want to summon on a banner for a particular character, you have to ask yourself if you're really going to actually use this, this hero. In the first year, pretty much any time something came out that looked kind of cool, either it was nice art, or it was a character that like, I sort of liked, I would want to summon for them and I would spend however many orbs that I had. And then I'd get the hero, but they wouldn't. I wouldn't actually end up using them, and they just kind of sat in my barracks and didn't do anything. So after a while, I got really good at asking myself, if I summon for this character, for this hero, am I actually going to use them for anything? Are they either a character that I love so much that I will definitely 100% build them and use them just because I love them? Or are they going to fit into a particular role that I need for a certain team and I can, I will absolutely place them there? Whatever it might be, purposes vary of course, but do you have an actual like intentional plan for that character? Like last year when um, New Year's Liar and New Year's Kaiza came out, I saw them and I immediately had a plan for them because I wanted to put them on a team with Ronolf because Ronolf works best with other beasts just like you know most other beast units. He prefers to be on a team with other beasts. I didn't really have a lot of beast units to use with him at that point and since they both kind of tied in with his character I figured it would be a good team and I do regularly use them, the three of them on a team together alongside Mordecai. That's an example of how I would choose to summon when I knew for sure I was going to use them. But other times, even if I think a character looks kind of cool or they have something really neat, unless I'm really positive that I'm going to use them for something either as a unit or as fodder, then I, I just don't summon. So you have to get really good at asking yourself if you, are, if you really are going to use that character or not. Another tip that I have is, and this can be hard, this takes a little bit of willpower, but it is very helpful which is just don't summon on the first day that a banner comes out. Think about how long the banner is going to be around. A lot of banners are around for a pretty good amount of time, usually at least a few weeks, if not longer. Don't summon immediately. Even if you're really tempted, and if you are really tempted, tell yourself, maybe I'll wait and summon, summon on that banner a little bit closer to the end of the banner. So like, don't shut yourself down completely and say that you're definitely not going to summon on it. Unless there's nothing interesting on it, of course. But if you can just resist spending on the very first day, a lot of times that initial hype that you felt will kind of start to die down. And you'll end up being able to just skip the banner completely. That happens to me all the time, where there's a banner that I'm really tempted to summon on, but I just, I wait a couple days or a week, and I come back and I ask myself, hmm, do I still really, really need to summon on this? And a lot of times, sometimes the answer is yes, and I do end up summoning. But other times, I'll say, yeah, actually, I don't need this as much as I kind of initially felt like I did. And then I'm able to just kind of, like, let go of it. And I don't, I don't end up summoning, and I'm able to, you know, save whatever orbs I might have ended up spending on that banner. 
another thing that's helpful, and this this is very dependent on kind of your playstyle in the game. So if you're like me and you really mostly just like to summon for your favorite characters, then it's a good idea to try to limit the number of characters that you consider to be your favorites. Even if you like a lot of characters in the series, I have it. I have like six or seven characters who I always will summon for if they ever get their base version added or if they ever get an alt. I will always summon for those characters no matter what. And I will always summon until I get at least one copy. But most of them are not characters that really get a whole lot in the game. So it doesn't really demand my orbs that much. If you have a list of characters of seven characters, and that list is like Camilla, Lynn, Cordelia, Ike, and I don't know, three other ones, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to resist. The only one of my favorites who gets a lot is Ephraim. Outside of him, most of my favorites don't have more than one alt. The only one that does is Amigo. Uh, and some of them don't have any, like Ronald and Matthew. So that makes it very easy for me. If you're someone who has a lot of favorites who are more popular, it's going to be tougher. My advice would be to try to narrow it down to just a couple that you'll always summon for. And, and just summon for one copy. Don't summon for the plus 10 immediately. If you're trying to save. Once again, if you have that one thing that you want more than anything in the game, that's what you're saving for. So the day Matthew gets an alt, all of these orbs can potentially disappear. And that's fine. There's nothing else I want them for more than that. That is what I want these orbs for. So I'm not saying, like, never go all in. It's just, if you're gonna go all in, make sure that that is absolutely 100% the thing that you want, and there is nothing that could come out the following month that you would want even more. <laughs> so just think carefully about that, that's all. But anyway, outside of my, like, my seven characters that I'll always summon for, I have a couple others that are my, like, likely summon characters. There might be another, maybe five to ten characters who I might summon for, it kind of depends. Depends how like good the alt looks, it depends if they have already gotten anything. So like, Laurie Shell is probably on that, in that list. I love Laurie Shell as a character, so the first couple times she got alts, I definitely wanted to get copies of them. But now that she has a couple, if she gets another one, I can probably skip it. I don't have to have every single version of Laurie Shell. Another really good example of that is Lynn, because I like Lynn a lot, too. But now that Lynn has gotten so many alts, I'm I'm able to skip on them. I don't really need to have every new Lynn alt that comes out. I have a lot of the old ones, and that's, that's fine with me, because I don't really care that much about keeping up with the meta. If you're not like me and you're someone who cares more about keeping up with the meta, I think you still can be an orb saver. It's just that instead of making your decisions around which characters you like, your decisions are going to be around how, just how good of a meta character is this, is this new hero going to be, and how much staying power will they likely have. So you have to be very selective, and really think about which game modes you prioritize, which competitive modes each hero will be most useful for, and then make your decisions based on that. But just because something looks good and looks powerful right now, remember that power creep is always happening, and you can always just skip this banner, and something else that's really good will probably come out on the next one. Finally, the best piece of advice that I can offer you for saving orbs is to have a favorite character who IS will never give an alt to. <sighs> Someday, Matthew. That said, these are my quick tips and tricks for saving orbs. I hope that at least a couple of these will be helpful to you if you are hoping to get your own orb hoard, so to speak. Please let me know in the comments if you are an orb saver and how many orbs you've saved up, what tricks you have yourself for saving orbs and what's been helpful to you historically, and if there are any banners or heroes that you're looking forward to and that you're saving your orbs for, let me know that as well. So that's going to be it. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care, have a good day, and Gemini out.